I just want to commend the leadership of Tauka. Because what I'm witnessing, it's an incredible development of, of a network of professionals. And this is not coming out of the air. And it gives me a lot of comfort because in women leadership, we talk about having a strong foundation on which you stand. Tauka is not standing on air. It is standing on a very strong foundation. Shoulders of women professionals who know and know who they are and they are doing it big. Hongereni sana. Why am I saying this? I was there at the Genesis. I pledged my support to this professional network. I'm not a CPA holder, but I saw something in this network, unique. And how did I come to see something unique? And this network has to grow and grow and grow and surpass your even wildest expectation. It's because it came at the heels of my talk in Kenya when the women who are certified accountants invited me to speak to them in Mombasa. And that was the story. And the story started. And that story started from a very, very good foundation of dedicated women who wanted to make a difference. I read your conference brochure, and I said, what am I going to say? Because I've seen so many conference brochures, but I can tell you your conference brochure is a result of a thought leadership. It is a testimony of people who have thought process, which is a growth oriented attitude thought process. What more can you say about leading without title when you have people who are able to mobilize and bring people together to a conversation? That is not a conversation of trivial issues. It is not a conversation of talking about personalities. It is a conversation of saying, what is our value as women? What is our contribution as women? What are we adding to our nation as women? What is our force as women? And that is a phenomenal, phenomenal conversation. And such phenomenal conversation, it's what defines a leader without title. So the principle number one, for a leader without title, it is your ability to recognize contribution and applaud the work which is done by another person. Instead of shooting down and bringing people down, using a lot of your energy to discredit, to criticize, you use that energy to build on the effort of other people. Mother Teresa tells us, you cannot do it alone. So when people do something, and when you give credit to what they have done, you are a leader without title. That is the first principle. Recognizing, appreciating, giving credit where it is due. And that does not come out of the air. It comes from your moral compass. Moral compass in leadership is what defines a leader without title. The title is of no consequence. The funds, chief financial officer, whatever, call it chief, 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 if you don't have a moral compass, you don't have awareness of knowing something good has been done, and my work is to make it better 
to build it, to make it become a great result. And this is the theme of your conference. How do we apply ourselves as women to make a difference? And when we are talking about a difference, there must be a standard. And that standard must be high. Now, I look at Tauka. How can an organization which started in 2015, you are closing to 1,000 members strong. It's credibility. Credibility. Credibility is another principle of a leader without title. Because the question we have, why should anyone be led by you? A big question. What gives you a license to lead another person? And there is a book. You can Google and you can get it. Written by two professors from Harvard Business School. One of them is called Gerard. I can't remember the other one. And the title is, Why Should Anyone Lead You? I mean, why should anyone be led by you? A very controversial title. And this takes me now to what kind of skills do we need to have so that we stand and without title, we are respected, we are dignified, without title. What are those skills? And this is what takes me now to emotional intelligence, my dearest subject. Because if you look at emotional intelligence, the gist of it, it is ability to inspire high performance, great results in the people that you lead. Forget about title. Do you have that ability to inspire? Tauka, you have inspired certified and non-certified. You have inspired the sponsors. I look around. Each time I come to meet with Tauka, there are a number of sponsors. The ability to inspire comes from ability to build relational capital. Mtaji mausiano. Relational capital, you cannot value it in money. You are accountants. You value everything. But relational capital, you cannot value it. The relational capital, Tumaini, the executive director, has with me, it cannot be quantified. Neema has with me, it cannot be quantified. And my friend is Riel Mchem soon to be a doctor, working on a subject which is very, very passionate to us, women empowerment. Did I know her? She's younger than me, obviously. To my neck and fit to be my daughter, obviously. What inform that relational capital? And emotional intelligence is telling us that. What informs that relational capital? Why did I get hooked to Tumaini? Tumaini, I'm sorry I'm using your example. Why did I get hooked? One of the next principles of a leader without a title, they don't talk about other people. They don't shoot other people down. Tumaini taught me leadership without title. She has never had a conversation which is petty, which is personalized. She talks about Tauka 
at a very dignified level. And you can see the results of that. So when I saw you are talking about the leadership without title, how can women inspire great results? Already, already you have inspired great results. When you start talking about people, you become trivial. And this world is not interested on trivial talk. It is interested in people who set the agenda. Tauka, you are setting the agenda. They are not interested on your GPA, your technical skills. Yes, we need them, but how does your presence inspire others? And this takes me to a third very important skill after the relational capital. Your personal authority. If everything is taken from you, what will make you stand? And when you look at personal authority, for the women accountant, you are very lucky. I think you have to say thank you, God, now. Can you say thank you, God? Because one element of profession, I mean, of the uh, personal authority is expertise, intellectual. What is your intellectual authority? For you, your career, your certification gives you that authority. So it means if I were to stand with Neema Kiure, She's a mile apart from me if we are starting a profession together. Because I come from a profession which does not have certification. I'm a social scientist. Neema will have a mileage ahead of me because in the element of the personal authority already, she has the intellectual authority, the expertise authority. And what does that expertise authority gives you? The power of analysis. It gives you the power of setting agenda in a room. Your signature, your signature has power. So that kind of an element in your profession makes me wonder why should anyone feel small? Unajidogosha kwa sababu gani? Wakati your signature is dignified and it is not a self-promotion dignity. It is given. Given after people recognizing you are there. Let's clap for ourselves. Because no doubt, that element of personal authority, you have it. How are you using it? How are you rising to a challenge? How are you making your presence felt? I'll give you a bit of my background. At the age of 28 years, I was serving in board of directors. So the question is, with such a young age, how did I get there? At 31, I was in the committee of the Arusha Regional Management brushing shoulders with the RPCs, the RACs, and whatever. How? And my trajectory 
continued to be like that. 2010, you can calculate, I turned 50. So you can add up, you can know how, how old I am. And I was preparing to come here, somehow a small notebook came to the surface. I was in Washington, D.C. And some of the things that I wrote in that small notebook, I was auditing myself. I've turned 50. My children are doing well. I have a loving husband. I have fostered a career that is respected. My question was, am I living my full potential? It was a very poignant question. Am I living my full potential? Three pages I wrote that night. And in those three pages, I was able to travel deep inside myself and realize I was not applying myself fully. That realization came in the basement of our high, I mean, of our ambassador's residence. My sister was the ambassador at that particular time. So when the firecrackers were going on, Zuhura Muro was auditing herself, seriously. But when I was auditing myself, there was another question I asked myself. What is holding me back? So I audited my fears. Because you cannot be a leader without title unless you have audited your, yourself. What is it hold me that, holding me back? And I was able to identify the things that were holding me back. I realized I was endowed with certain qualities that I was not espousing. I realized I was like a candle that could be lit and be out there and shine other people. I was not using it. I realized I had an influencing power. I was not using it. I realized I was born educator and developer of other people. I was not using it. When I audited myself that night, I asked another question. What if I die this night? What will I respond to my maker when my maker asked me, what did you give to life? I felt cold in my spine because my story was very small. Then I asked another question. What if my maker gives me another 50 years? And that was the map I created in Washington, D.C. And that map is the one that I'm applying now. That map is the one which gave me the courage to say, Tauka, I'm going to be there for you. <laughs> and it is not only Tauka. I finish here. Tomorrow I'm flying to Zanzibar. Human resource is passionate. I'm going to power another professional network. Because in that night, I knew I'm not applying myself properly. How do I position myself so that I can inspire before I expire? And who? 
do I want to inspire? What kind of seeds do I want to plant? Some of them to, gener to germinate in my lifetime. And others will gem germinate later. Still there will be my seed. Then my story will be good. So the first audit was on the intellectual capacity. How am I applying myself? I've been given this intellectual capacity. I've been given this influence and I can set an agenda. I can redirect. And that's what has made me able to make a lot of transformation in the organizations that I serve. Organizations that invite me to provide governance because of that ability to apply my intellectual capacity to set agenda, to set a direction. At Washington DC basement, I realized I was not using it. So I came back to Tanzania with a mission. And that mission is what gave me the ability to serve in so many spaces. That mission made me meet Tumaini, Sirieli, and others. When Sirieli invited me to work with her to support the then Vice President of the United Republic of Tanzania, I said Labeka, because I had already thought about it. You get what I mean, eh? So, a leader without title, self-awareness, self-reflection, self-knowledge. In the scripture we are told, Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. The first day, he saw a fire burning in a bush, and he went, and God called Musa. You are in the presence of your Lord. God Almighty asked him, what are you carrying in your hand? Of course God can see it was a, it was a stick. And Musa responded, my stick. Then Musa went on, I use it to bring fodder down for my folks, to lean on, and so on. Oh, Musa had a stick. And the scripture, the way they go, that stick is the one which released the Israelites from a 400 years of bondage in slavery. Your professional mastery is your stick. How are you using it? When you realize you have such a strong, and God is speaking to you every day, that's when you start leading from inside out, because it will inform you. What is the second element of personal authority? It is physical. Physical authority. God created you to be a victor. Failure is your choice. He gave you the casket for your soul. Fashioned it with the master artistry. That is the best. No human being. You have a beauty. You have a presence. That presence, how are you using it? How are you managing your body language so that your body language gives you the leadership presence that is required on the stage as a woman leader?
But to manage that physical presence, you must have awareness. And awareness comes from your self-appreciation. How do you appreciate yourself? Are you every day beating yourself down, saying, I'm too fat? My hips are a little bit too big. Which leads you to mkorogo. My complexion is not right. Foolish. Don't do that. Because already the greatest artist has created us to provide a leadership presence in this world. And this leadership presence controlled is the one which gives you that dignified leading without a title. Anywhere you enter, people see you as a leader. Forget about the junk theory of dressing professionally, power dressing. It is how you carry yourself. You may have a power dress code, but you are carrying yourself in a way that you don't espouse leadership qualities. See you many pattern. Eh. If you go to the fashionista of this world, they'll tell you Ushungi is not professional. Isn't it? Eh? She has shown us. Hmm? It is you. How are you toning your body to have that presence? Because that is one and first window of people trusting you. Just take a moment. Think about Grasa Marshall. Think about Mrs. Obama. Eight years in the White House. Look her presence. Look how her hair will be managed. Just remember, eight years. Grasa Michelle, look. Your physical presence as a professional woman is not supposed to be today you have hair like peacock. Tomorrow... <laughs> People will start asking questions. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. People must know your authority, your physical authority, might be able to anticipate your physical authority. It's not like, hmm. How is she going to appear today? That is not a physical authority. Look, audit all leaders who espouse physical authority. Mwalim Nyerere is known for, you remember? They are called, I don't know what, Chon Lai. Mandela Shets. That does not come out of air. It is self-knowledge. See you many part, eh? Self-knowledge. My work takes me a lot on a center stage. I'm made of very beautiful hips. My cat, God assigned the best angels to create it. I know it. Why? Because I have audited myself and I have appreciated myself. So from that appreciation I say, okay, how will my physical presence create distraction in a room like this full of men? I audited myself. You get what I mean? After that auditing, I said, ah, okay, I'm going to wear long dresses. 
choice. If I wear trousers, they are going to be not tight. Those are choices, physical presence. So, you can see. What is happening? If you don't manage your physical presence, they will look at your legs. You understand? The focus will be what? Very white, round legs. You get what I mean? Then your intellectual authority, because they have already gone somewhere else. You get what I mean? Yes. So I prevent that intentionally. Intentionally. Managing your physical press, uh, uh, appearance is critical in leadership. And it gives you that. You get into a committee and immediately they say, we want you to be the chair. We want you to be the vice chair. We want you to... Why? They are not focusing on your round legs or your round hips. They are focusing on your power as a lady. So that is the second one. The third one, emotional authority. And in your brochure, you have put in empathy. You have put in quite a number of things. Emotional authority is a very important aspect of your personal authority. And when I'm talking to women leaders, normally I have sessions that I call Women in Leadership Kitchen Party. I tell them, your emotional authority is informed by the choices that you have made. And the choices that you have made must be intentional choices that you have made. On September 7th, 1985, in my honeymoon room, it was Bahari Beach, I told this guy, have entered into this covenant of marriage with my full capacity. If you think it's going to be temporary, umeumia. So, the message I'm giving you, my dear man, don't rush. We are going to have a night. I'm going to be with you. Come thick, come rain, come sunshine. But my space must be respected. And that's how I built profession because I defined very early. And I told him, you are going to be my number one support system. And to be my number one support system, it means you must weigh in. Lazma Vutenguvu could bring up a family. Hadithi ya kwamba mi nitafanya kila kitu, inaishia papa kwenye hiki chumba. Serious. We had a very informed. And what I have noticed with our daughters, you are not having intentional conversation with the people who impact your emotional well-being and your psychological well-being every day. They impact your emotional and psychological well-being every day. Psychological and emotional stability starts from the relationships that you have. Now the question is, what if that relationship goes sour? And it is becoming a challenge. You have a choice. You can be a self-pity. 
You can think you have failed and go into depression. You can beat yourself to pulp and say, my life has stopped. Who told you your life has stopped? Emotional personal authority, it's accountable. Accountable to your own feelings. A woman is but her thoughts. The way you think will define your exterior. If your thoughts are negative, are pessimistic, your thoughts, I want to shoot down Nema, I want to shoot down Cyril. It won't help you. Takwa jokalam diem tu. Simna fam yu adis eh? Eh, jokalam diem. Anagonga kilam tu lakini halin diem. Oh, in English, you become a dog in a manja. A dog in a manja does not allow a cow to eat grass. When the cow tries to eat grass, the dog goes, woof, woof, woof. But the dog does not eat grass. I've seen so many professional women who shut down their career because of emotional instability. And emotional instability tells you if you shoot somebody down, you build yourself, forget. You create your own grave. The number of people you uplift give you kick to go higher. I'm repeating it. The number of people you uplift every day, they become your kick to take you to the higher space. So emotional stability helps you that because you will stop being judgmental, you stop being a shooter of progress. So personal authority, intellectual, you have it. Physical, you are so beautiful, well created, fashioned by the best artist, God. <laughs> Emotional, God balanced you. When you were created, God called the angels and say, prostate. Because this human being I have created, I have balanced this human being. Then I have, breath, I have breathed in my breath. You are carrying the breath of God. What can make you feel small with all this? Breathing now and breathe out and say, thank you, God. Because you have all the four elements. But there is a last element, the three elements. The last element is formal. Some of you, in the organizational structure, you are sitting in a very nice box. Some of you are partners in your firm. That is a formal authority. How are you using that formal authority to build others? If you are a professional critic, Kila kilichofanyo na mtu mungine hakifai. You are not a leader without title. That form of authority, you are not using it properly. 2022, January, on the 28th, Her Excellency appointed me to be the chairperson of TTCL, the first ever the first woman to lead TTCL. And when I was appointed, there were so many people who sent me messages. This, that. If you go there, someone has to go out. If you go, then I said, these people, they want to lock me in what is called confirmation bias. That honor is bad. Eh? John is useless. I said, no. 
I'm an adult. I know what I'm going to do. That form of authority in our public sector, wrong. You are supposed to be called Mheshimiwa. Why? You are appointed by the commander in chief. I go to TTCL building, the first visit. Then I'm told uh, the elevator, the lift that rides you to 12th floor, has to be reserved for Monyekiti alone because Monyekiti is so, so important. Mheshimiwa, she cannot ride with other people. But when I pinched myself, I realized I'm a person. And there are also people. I said, no, I want to ride with everybody. <laughs> when I go down there, I have people rushing, want to carry everything I'm carrying. I say, no, I'm carrying my briefcase myself. I stayed for three hours. I said, I want to go to washroom. I was given a key. I said, no, where do you go to washroom when you want to go to washroom? I want to go to the washroom you go to. Immediately, the culture has changed. I used my formal authority to dictate how I want leadership to be seen in that organization. Viyama vya wafanya kazi, wanakuja wanambia, mama, watu sura nisile zile, lakini wamebadilika. So, this subject, leadership without a title, it's very, very important subject. And in the women in boards, I normally teach leadership presence. Audit yourself. When you walk into a boardroom, what kind of presence are you creating? Make sure that you are intentional. Make sure that you are intentional what kind of presence you are creating. But that presence must be backed by being well-versed on the subject matter. And when you are well-versed on the subject matter, I'll tell you with my experience, my profile is reading 30 years. I'm standing here, I have 39 years of work experience. And I have told you I started working in the boardroom when I was 28. How, how does the member of parliament of Arusha constituency respect me as a 28-year-old lady? How does the RPC respect me? It is the quality of the information that I pass around the table. You may have very well versed information, the manner of passing it has also to be equally strong. When Zetu, while agency and can be an empty sack, but when they present, they have a way they do it. And what I have noticed, the way they are very passionate about what they are bringing on the table. They are very enthusiastic about what they are putting across as ideas. They are very guarded in terms of guarding what they believe in. Sasa, because us, our presence is yakujidogosha, we don't have that magnet. That magnet is very important. And when you are well versed, Another thing that you need to do to be a leader without a title is to be politically savvy. What is political savviness? And it is in the emotional intelligence, ability to perceive, ability to understand the dynamics around your leadership. 
I never get into a boardroom as a chairperson of any board, be it it is in East Africa or in Tanzania, in the private sector or in the public sector, before I have garnered 60 to 75% support on a motion that I want to pass. I know my wakorofi. I manage them outside the boardroom. By the time we come to the boardroom, I have managed the dynamics. That is political serviness. Immediately after I was appointed the chairperson of TTCL, I was in the US. Mini Bibi. I enrolled online course on the advancement in telecommunication. I was in telecommunication until 2007. Mama appoints me 2022. Technology has moved. So I had to verse myself. Then I identified someone in Tanzania, a technical mentor. I landed, I went to class. And one of the class I went with my husband. And he was amazed the kind of questions I was asking. Because I had enrolled online course, I was at the forefront of the questions that I wanted to ask. Then, I needed an administrative mentor. I picked someone who has been in the government for a long time. Balo Sefue. I went to him, I said, Tell me the dynamics. You get it, eh? Because our politicians have shot them interest. My own money, I flew to Dodoma. Kitocha kwanza, chamuino. Political mentor wangu yuko pale. Relational capital. Alikuwa introduce na nani? Marehem baba mkwe wangu. Ukizungumta mtu anayijua, uvungu wa politics ni uyo mzee. Mkwa naongea nae anasinzia pia, kwa saa misha kuwa mtu mzimu. Lakini madini ndiyo toka nayo pale, ya kuuwa mtu. Recognizing his relational capital. Sasa, Walivu anza maadui kunishuti. Hawa kujua ni metengeneza safety net. Umenipata eh? Hiyo ndio presence. Political serviness. Relational capital. How you are leveraging it. Does it require effort? Absolutely yes. And I'll say yes and yes. Lazima we invest Yani ningetokea gafla binfu. Chamuino kwa hile politiko menta wangu. Lakini ilikuwa ni memtupa hiyo miaka yote. Nilikuwa introduce na baba mkwa wangu ambaya mshata ngulea mbele ya haki. Ange nisikiliza. Nime stay current na yeye. Na spend money. Mzee umekuja ya Dar Islam. Na kuomba kuna dina muhimu kweli. Ile dina sinalipia serena. Yes, you invest kujenga relational capital. Na unaezo ukaitua kitu. Ukambewa iki kitu tunatangaza, lakini tunakuita wewe kwanza. Relational capital. So, a leader without a title must be aware of the importance of thriving to be the best version of yourself. Lastly, 2010, it was a time I was asking myself, is this the best version I can demonstrate? You are a work in progress. There is no destination of being your best version of yourself. Work on it. 
look for people who will brace to wake up at 2 o'clock a.m. to help you achieve your objective. Tumaini has done that. Look for people you can address by first name. They're high there, but you can call them by first name because of the quality of relationship you have built. These people will open impossible corridors for you. They'll speak where you cannot be. They'll promote you. They'll build you. They'll refer you. They'll push you. How much have you invested? It's your reflection. This conference gives you that reflection. And lastly, power others. Power others. God will power you. Thank you very much. Thank you.